In this video, I want to introduce you to the most popular and one of the oldest of the e-commerce plugins for WordPress, and it's called WP eCommerce. Now, its homepage, by the way, is getshopped.org. You can see the title up here. So that can be a bit confusing sometime when you're looking it up. But the actual name of the plugin is WP eCommerce, and you can see here, this is at the plugin directory at WordPress. So you can see here, as of this video, 2 million downloads. That's the most of any of the WordPress e-commerce plugins. Part of that's age. They've been around a long, long time. I remember using them over five years ago, long before WordPress even had a lot of functions like custom post types and so on. And it was amazing what they did at that time, but it was pretty clunky. However, it's been updated and updated and updated and pretty much different from the way it was five years ago and again remains one of the most powerful ones. And part of the power of it comes from this model and you can see it here. And everybody else is following this model basically. You download the plugin for free, all right, and it does a lot out of the box and then you buy upgrades after that. Now a lot of them these days, there's a lot of functionality you have to buy. One of the great things about WP eCommerce is not only is it great out of the box, but it has a huge number of free plugins. And so the model is very much like WordPress itself, right? You have a core that you build and then you add on functionality as you need it. And look at these are all free additions onto here. Integrating with things like MailChimp or AWeber and all of those. We've got shipping modules like this one for Canada, for example. I mean, I paid $35 for a module for a different plugin. These are all free. So there's a lot of support behind this. And again, one of the difficulties with any kind of e-commerce is that it's very personal. And so what you may need, I don't need. And what I need, you don't need. So here's a way of solving that problem is you make plugins for it to do particular things that the core project doesn't do. Having said that, right out of the box, WP eCommerce is extremely powerful. So let's go and let's add it in here with our plugins. We're going to add new and we go WP eCommerce. It's important to have the dash in there, makes it easier to find it. E dash commerce. And there it is, right off the bat. Now you'll see it doesn't have huge ratings. And that's partly because it's been around a long time and it didn't have great ratings early on. It is much improved now, so I have no hesitation in recommending it at all. So let's go and install it right now. Notice that was based on 733 ratings. That's a lot of ratings over a lot of years. And we activate our plugin. Now, the first thing we get is this notification here about changing your theme not your theme per se, but the files for WP eCommerce to make it compatible with your theme, let's say. You don't have to worry about any of that. And actually, I would just click here to remove the box. I'll show you when it says here, if you go here and it says update your active theme, what they're doing is they're taking you to the settings page and the presentation area. And in fact, you can do some very interesting things here, which is copy the files from WordPress eCommerce and put them into your theme. And it allows you to literally directly edit some of these files. We're going to get into all of that later when we talk about presentation and theming. But the fact that they have this up front, it's kind of handy to tell you about it, but it might be a bit daunting for people who just are trying to set up a shopping cart and don't want to get into all of this just yet. So let's click here to ignore and remove this box. We'll come back to it later on, of course. So what you have is a store settings under the settings file. This is a bit different than some others. You don't have a separate place for it here. There's a separate box for products. And of course, we'll be getting to that. But the store settings itself are not in a separate menu tab. They're under settings down here. And they tab it here in various areas. And we're going to move through all of these over time. But right now, we just need to set up some basics to get ourselves going here. So I'll do a few in this video and continue on in another video as well. So let's find I'm in Canada. So let's choose that. Select your primary business location. This is where you are. 
and I'm going to choose my province. So this pops up after you've chosen your country. Now our target markets, who are we going to be selling to? I find this a little bit awkward to use compared to some others because you've got to do a lot of scrolling and so on. Let's choose none right now and I'm going to then go through, I would go through and choose the markets I'm going to sell to. Now in my case, I'm just going to make this, see what I mean? It's a fair bit to go through here. And I'm going to say USA and let's say the UK actually. Do they do it as UK? Oh yes, they do it that way. All right. Let's say we're going to do it that way. All right. There's a whole lot we're going to come back to as we need it here, but what do we need to get started? There's some stuff about SEO here. By default, it's turned off here, and it shows you how it's going to create URLs. We'll again get into that separately. Let's choose our currency here. It's defaulted to New Zealand because they're based out of New Zealand. That's where they got started. I'm going to choose the Canadian dollar. I want my dollar sign like that. Thousand separators there. And let me save my basic changes. And in another video, we're going to cover more of our basic settings to get us going here in WP e-commerce.